Are you ready for the word this morning? Yes. Me too. Me too. You know, um, you know, we always eat together. <laughs> In other words, when we when we get a, when we read the word, when we when we hear a message, it's not just uh, you being taught; it's it's us, right? And uh, I, 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 so I always love being able to minister the word. How many of you like this? This is a last minute uh, order of service note. Ready? Um, Real quick, this is a quickie, like this is probably what we're going to teach today. Um, I took a moment with the whiteboard when worship was going on, so we might go with that today. But before we jump into the Word uh, this morning, it, it just was a laying out of what's already been taught. Really simple, okay? Um, I want to take a moment, and, um, and I want to bring a, a little bit of, um, I guess, raising the bar, if you will, uh, in, 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 for the house. Uh, how many of you know, sometimes in, in your family, um, there's rule, house rules, Anybody have any house rules? We have a house rule. Uh, one of our house rules um, that sometimes we can grow laxed in has to do with where our phones go and don't go. So we have a house that's uh, one bedroom's downstairs and the living room. We all like to hang out down there, uh, but phones don't go upstairs. And so if you come over to my house uh, and you're my son's friends, I guess where your phones stay? Downstairs. And is it because we uh, say, oh, no, like I, I'm afraid that you're going to look at porn on there? No, you probably already are. If you are there, you're going to look at wherever. But in our house, uh, it's, if you're going to be there, it's going to be to connect, hang out, play, uh, or connect with us. So we have this rule, right? Um, and how many of you, maybe some of y'all have some rules. Some of you, being from the South, you don't take your shoes off. Is there anybody here uh, that still has the take your shoes off when you come into the house rule? One, two, okay. We have a very few. See, in Minnesota, it was you take your shoes off when you come into the house because you walk through the mud and the muck and the, and the snow, which is six, seven, eight months of the year. There's just, it, you just get slop on your feet and you just ruin stuff real fast. When I came to the South and people, I remember our first, our first house um, and we had just put carpet in, new carpet and everything. And uh, they came over for like uh, Matthew's first birthday. And everyone, I think it was actually raining outside. And, uh, and they come in, they're like, hey! And they're just like, what's up? And I'm like, rude. You know what I mean? And so there's like these house rules that just, that just can kind of really go, make you go crosswise, right? And so how many of you know, um, when, you're, when you're in the house, there's some things that we, you know, a culture that you just, you, there's a standard that you set. So like when you come over to your house and you pull your shoes off and your friend comes over, they're like, oh, I guess we take off our shoes here, right? Like there's just this culture that it just makes things go better. Um, I believe that there's a culture in God's house that is important as well. And um, I think it has to do with how we enter and how we exit. Um, and so I want to bring just, uh, uh, just maybe uh, attention to these two things, both how we enter and how we exit. How many of you know um, uh, how you exit the sanctuary um, when, like, let's say there was just like a time of, of praise or, and presence, um, and maybe some people are at the altar, and we're just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's kind of just rude, right? Because they're just kind of like, it's just disrespectful. Um, it's also the same way with how you enter. And I'm not just talking about entering loud and things like that. I'm talking about whether or not we enter. Um, there's a time, um, and in our culture, there's, there's this thing called uh, on time, and there's this thing that's not on time. I mean, know what I'm talking about. So I know we're out, we're going to be late and so on and so forth. But I think one of the things I'm bringing, uh, really the main correction today is in our lobby, Okay, um, so we'll have service, and sometimes we show up to service, and we don't even come into service. Now, some of you, you know, the shoe fits, wears, wears it, and I'm talking into the lobby here. But if you are here, and, and this is just honor for the Lord and for the other people in, in this house, that there is a pull that you're to have, but also maybe they're to have. Maybe there's a word that they're to, to get. And so there's the time of, there's a space for lobby, and it's before and after service, and there's a space for service, and it's during service, right? And so I think it's just really important that we set a culture that where we don't just have a, a ministry called, let's hang out in the lobby all service, and let's just shoot the breeze and shoot the bull, um, because uh, I really don't want to have to sit under the word and put myself under today. So this is a, this is a straightforward deal. So if you find yourself sitting in an awaken because your back hurts, that's awesome. That's awesome. Because you can't get up and you can't get down or you got the, the diarrheas since Easter's, you know, great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, do that. 
You know, I, I'd rather, much rather have you do that than sit up and, go and doing this all service and being a distraction. That's just honor for the person next to you. And so the same way that I wouldn't do that and sit up here and just walk, run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that, that would be honor. I'm not going to dishonor somebody else by saying, hey, I'm just going to talk about all my biggest bucks right here. I know that they were worshiping the Lord, but you know, I don't, you know sometimes maybe, maybe you don't like the person speaking. Maybe you don't like the person singing. Maybe the way that they sing turns you off, or maybe the way that he preaches turns you off. You know what the best thing you could ever do is come under that, and the Bible tells us how we treat others is how we're treating the Lord. So anyway, there's a correction. I'm going to bring this for probably three weeks, uh, maybe more if it doesn't change. And if it doesn't, I'm going to give you the kick, all right? No, what I'm really trying to do is ultimately this. I believe that there is a culture um, that's set by what's allowed, right? And um, I just think that we should be the standard of when people are coming in. It's like, hey, man, let's get into service when it starts. Like, hey, when we hear that music kick on, let's find our seats. I mean, we, for the movies, we, we, we hurry. and Oh, I don't want to have to get popcorn. I want to go get seats. Will you get popcorn? Because I want to catch the beginning, right? I mean, my God, seriously. What, what in the world? All right? All right. So there it is. So I wasn't trying to be a soapbox, but that is just honor, Right? It's just, it's just, you know, somebody's birthday party or whatever. You're gonna, you want to be there when it's, when it's time for the cake, right? Or the, you know, the candles, all right? All right, so we're not blowing out any candles today. But we are going to teach the Word. All right, you ready? Uh, let's just come to the Lord first. Father, thank you so much for your Word today. Thank you that it's light to us. Thank you um, just for bringing us here today and for, for speaking to our hearts, uh, for bringing us direction for helping uh, and for, for setting a course. And we just thank you for our partnership with you and yours with us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in this, uh, we're just teaching for about three weeks here about resisting the devil. Somebody say resisting the devil. And so last week, our scripture and um, our Bible memory verse, uh, James chapter 4, verse 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Um, that was our, what we began our, ta- our teaching on, and that was our memory verse last week. And this is where we're going to pick up again, James chapter 4, uh, verse 7. So if you'll put it up there, uh, it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Last week we talked about um, submission and really submission and authority and how important it is for you and I to understand first off and foremost that God is a God of order. He's a God that, of authority. And in other words, there's the, there, he, there is a, a system or a, a way uh, that God reigns. G, G, you know, God and the devil are not equals. So many times we, we talk about like resisting the devil and we think we're like pushing against him. No, no, no. God, it's like this. So authority, submission, we, and, and there's, a, there's, a lo, there's a way in heaven that things are to exist. There's a way on earth, and we talked a little bit about those kind of things. And even uh, to the point of, and I'm not going to give you all these scriptures, but it talks about how children honor your father and mother. So there's this order of coming under. It doesn't say when you stop honoring them, Right? Like when they're 18, then it meet. No, it's like you stay under there. It actually says this. It says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat them with words. So in other words, if you're a young man, you don't rebuke a 50-year-old man because he stood too long in the line or whatever, whatever it might be. It tells you not to do that. Why? Because there's, there's an order right? That God has. So there's order. And so we, we talk talking about those kind of things and understanding, number one, the order when we've been born again, we've been raised to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. So we've been raised up. We, we spoke just to that just a little bit. But when we when we believed on Christ, we've been grafted in him as the body, he being the head. And we've been raised to sit, raised up with him far above all principality rule. So when we're talking about resisting the devil, we're not like on the same plane. Or like even the same, um, the same, the same field. Um, we we are actually above, and when, when but when we when we when we um, when we don't know that sometimes we can get into the resisting the enemy or resisting the devil uh, just in a very fleshly way, um, and so then it becomes out of willpower instead of his power, and there's a, there's a total difference that you and I are to be operating by. 
Um, and so, anyway, so we were t- hitting on that. So resist the devil, or submit to God, that, and then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, it's important for us to understand this, that what, I, what is not submitted, submitted to God, he does not have authority over. This is huge. Um, uh, Pastor Mac, uh, he's a where I grew up at church, he's a, my pastor, Pastor Mac Hammond, um, and he was teaching this last week at a, at a, a, a conference, and he was talking about how uh, wisdom is the principal thing. It's the principal thing. It's not faith. It's not love. It's not grace. It's wisdom is the principal thing, because wisdom is what God, it, it's the word, but it's also the, the means, right? And so he's talking about the, that wisdom it really is the foundation uh, of, of everything, and he was talking about how so many times um, wisdom, you know, we, we, if it was just about faith and, and faith and healing, it would be like, okay, God, heal me of, of, um, he's, of lung cancer while I continue to smoke a cigarette. It's not wise, right? If, if this is the cause, right? If it was the cause of, if it was the, what, what I, I'm not asking God to heal me while I continue. Wisdom would say, I'm going to, first of all, put this down, right? And then, and also, right, say, thank you, Lord, right? So because what I, what I submit to him, so huge, this is huge for our bodies. God does not have authority over what's not submitted to him. And so this is huge for us in the church, and, and not just in the church, but just concerning our health, concern, Lord, if, 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 uh, if our bodies are submitted to him, then guess what it's going to look like? It's going to look like what we're going to get to here today. Lord, what do you say? Lord, what do you say? That's what submission is. What do you say about this? Because sometimes it's going to be about what, whether I can have this Coke. Other times it's going to be about this itch on my arm or this cough or whatever it might be. Lord, what do you say? What do you say about what I'm going to put in? But also, what do you say about what's going on? Right? This is huge. So again, because God only has authority over what you submit to him. Now, there will be a day when every knee will bow. Right? Uh, that's just not today. So right now, we get to choose. We get to choose to say something. We get to choose to do something. This is why even right now, we have the opportunity to offer the sacrifice of praise. You know, how many of you know when everything's perfect and we're in heaven and everything's perfect and there's no tears and there's no, how many of you know it's not such a sacrifice to say, thank you, Lord, because everything's just, he just, right? But right now there's this opportunity you and I get to offer him a sacrifice of praise. This will bring us into today's uh, uh, title is I will say, I will say, <clears throat> and, and also our, our Bible memory for this week, I, Psalms 91 Uh, Verse 2, I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. I love that in the Berean study Bible. It says, I will say to the Lord instead of I just will say of the Lord. I love it because, because you you know, when we and you and me, we talk, when we we pray, we're, we're not just talking of the Lord, we're talking to the Lord. So I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge, or you are my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. And so we're talking about I will say, I will, I choose to, I choose to, I choose. Sub, sub, further, therefore, submit to God, James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee. Submission always takes our will. It always takes our will. And then we resist the devil, right? And so let's talk a, a little bit, again, define resist today, um, Because we're going to talk a little bit about so many times submit to God and resist the devil. We're going to get to the resisting the devil. But sometimes, um, here I just would say this, the devil's not behind every bush. But he he works a whole lot more often than we we give um, credence or than we give recognition. Right? Uh, he's working a whole lot more, but we're going to look today. Not last week we looked about submission. We're going we're to get next week to resist in the devil, but today we're going to look at how the devil's working with you and me. He would love to partner with you, and he'd love to partner with me. And the way, the, where he partners and where he goes is he goes to your lust. He, the things that you have, the things that you desire, the things that way, the where you lust, Where you desire, he takes and he breathes a a, a spirit, okay, that you'll find the word spirit, which is pneuma. You'll see it capitalized when it's Holy Spirit in the Bible. But this is, the word is breath, wind, or spirit. And that spirit is, it's a breath. And a lot of times, the the wrong spirit or, or, or a demonic spirit would 
the devil would breathe on you and try to exploit your lust. Now, for some of you, it's the chocolate brownie. For others, it's, oh man, that big buck. He's, you know, during hunting season, he's there every Sunday morning, only Sunday mornings. <laughs> for some of you, it's like, Maybe it has to do with uh, sex. Maybe for some of you it has to do with, with being accepted, right? Like being accepted. We're going to look at this here in a minute. But the Bible tells us that we're to resist the devil. But sometimes we don't recognize him in uh, and him being a part of whispering to our lusts that we're to be, in a sense, um, which we've already crucified. The Bible says that if any man um, be in Christ, he's a new creation, right? But the Bible also tells us that, that when we... Okay, let me back up. Let me give you this. I get pulled the wrong scripture there. When you and I are born again, and, and this is baptism, we, 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 we're the bapti- when we get baptized, the Bible tell, it, we're, there's a signification of our death, burial, and resurrection in Christ. And so if uh, we have crucified or we are crucified with Christ. And so, nevertheless, it's not I that live, but it's Christ who lives within me. And so there's this flesh that he wants to, in a sense, re-resurrect, or in a sense, give that place of dominion to direct our lives instead of our spirit. So if we, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it tells us this, that he tells us, and this is so basic, but spirit, soul, and body. Let me put it up there. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, he tells us that we would be kept um, the God of peace sanctify you wholly, I pray. The God, oh, your whole spirit, your soul, and your body. And so there's this body or this flesh, and there's this spirit, okay? And we're going to see that they're actually completely opposite of one another. And the soul is the decision-making part of you. And so when you have been born again, when you've believed on Jesus, the Bible says we, 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 we're laying our body down. We're submitting ourselves to him. I'm crucified with Christ. Never let us. I live. But it's Christ who now lives within me in this flesh. And the enemy would love to whisper to your flesh. Okay. In other words, th- th- this part and say, you rule. You who said you no longer rule. You now, t- here, let me give you a boost back up. So that your mind would, or your soul would side with body and therefore direct your days. But, but the Lord tells us to be, be not conformed to this world, but there's this pressure. This is Romans chapter 12, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as you begin to think, right, spirit, soul, as you put the word of God, spirit words, spirit words, the word of God, his words are spirit, the Bible tells us. As you put that before you, now that's direct in your life. Okay, we're going to get to this and look at this in Scripture here in in just a moment. Now, let's just hit resist again real quick. Resist is a military term uh, uh, in classical Greek, which means to strongly resist an opponent. This, uh, this, This week, I was going through my notes and just taking a copy and paste of just that portion and putting it into this week's notes. And um, this next phrase, I, I thought was I thought I had accidentally typed in instead of copy and paste that definition right from the Strong's, I thought I just copied and pasted the top one and then just memorized the bottom one and typed it. Okay, Because here's what it said. It said, resist is to keep one's possession. And I'm like, oh. So I actually went in and I deleted that, and I went, keep one's position. Right? And so then I'm like, wait a minute. Could it, have, could it be that I didn't type that and I copied and pasted that? So I went back to the Strong's, and it said to keep one's possession. So to resist is, is not just to keep your position, but it's also to keep your possession. So there's the, there are things that have been given to you in Christ. There's been things that have been given to you that, that you and I, that we have. Okay, our, One of those would be righteousness. My righteousness is in Christ. It's not based upon my works. It's, it's, it's in him. So I gotta, if I'm going to resist the devil, I'm going to have to hold on to who I am and who he says I am. Because if I'm going to res- he's going to call into question a whole lot of things. And guess what? When I fall and when I struggle, when I, in Hebrews chapter 4, I will not come boldly to the throne of grace to receive help and mercy in time of need. So there's things, if I'm going to resist the devil, not only am I going to have to hold a position, I'm going to have to hold a possession, things that he's given to me. There's things that he's given you. There's things even like thinking about your children. Who gave you your child? 
the Lord. So maybe you're a parent and you're fighting for your kids. Remember who gave you that? Who gave me this child? This is, this is huge for resisting. This is, Lord, this is, the, the devil didn't breathe into my son or to my daughter and give him to me. It was the Lord. This is a gift from him. Satan, take your hands off. This is my possession. These are, so you can kind of look at this and you could say, what, is he, what, what possession has he given you? I don't have the reference here, but the Bible tells us that he's given us uh, great and precious promises. There are promises and words, he, his word that he's given to you that he said, this is for you. Well, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Take, take hold. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. Or when you got that and you received it and you said, this is mine. Thank you, Lord. And you saw it. Hold on to that word. So to resist, it's not just a position, but it's also a possession. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm yelling. I'm not trying to yell. I guess I just, I don't really need a mic. You know what I'm saying? All right. So um, let, let, let's go here. So we said, we said this, the devil tempts uh, again, because we're talking, we talked last week about submitting, and we're talking about resisting the devil. But we're going to figure out kind of the in between: what needs to be submitted, and where am I resisting the devil? Like I, I, I don't really know what, what, what's going on. Because I'll tell you this: it's important that we take authority over Satan, take authority over, and be speaking to the enemy in our homes at times. Now, here's the thing. There, there are some, some, some people never have taken Christians that have been maybe born again, saved for 20 years. And, and you haven't said, I, I, I take authority over you, whatever spirit or whatever, over, in the name of Jesus, and I cast you out of, in the name. Every, like you see a spirit of depression on your kid. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. You will not hold my kid, and, I, and you will not hamper his mind, and I command you to go now in Jesus' name. And, and it hasn't happened in five years. The enemy just, he must be asleep. He's probably left you alone for five years. No. No. He's been, he's been able to just run around doing his thing. A lot of it has to do with what we're going to talk about next week, but about be, how he's bound us up, the strong man. Did you know you're the strong man? That he, he has to bind up and distract and get us tied up over here, you know, get us busy over here so that he can work, so he can come in and steal, kill, and destroy. We're not vigilant. This is, doesn't the Bible tells it, tell us, be sober, 1 Peter 5, be sober, be vigilant for the enemy. He's roaring around seeking whom he can devour. Absolutely. So this is important. Number one, that we know when to resist. We know first what's submitted, but where are we in the in-between? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Him running, but where is this resisting point? So submission, him running. Like when I take authority over him, I have to see him going. That's important. Next week. But here we are. The devil tempts us by our own lust. James chapter 1, 13 through 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one, somebody say each one, is tempted by his own evil desires. He is lured away and enticed. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. We know that the Bible tells us that when sin entered, death entered. The ultimate goal of Satan it would be to bring death. Where God is life and would love to bring life, Satan would love to bring death. How does he do it? By drawing us away. By what? By our own lust. So some of you could say, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> you ever been there? Can you believe? You ever heard this? Can you believe so-and-so did this? I mean, how sick and sadistic is that? Right? You ever, you ever been there? You ever heard that? You ever? I mean, let's just go, uh, what, what, what's the worst thing? I don't know. It was because in their, in their flesh, there was that, that lust. Okay? Now, you have maybe have a different one. Well, you do. Yeah. Well, and we're going to look at that here in, in just a moment. Galatians chapter 5 16 through, uh, we'll go ahead and read through 26 here. But I say, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Again, remember spirit, soul, and body. Okay. So it says this, 
For the flesh, or the body, craves what is contrary to the spirit. So there's, there's this wrestling match. There's the complete opposite, right? They're on complete opposite sides. And this is why it's so easy for Satan to whisper to your flesh, resurrect this, lead, be led by how you feel, be led by what you desire, be led by these things. He says, because um, for the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposed, opposite sides, to one another, so that you do not, uh, do, not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the acts of the flesh, and this is where you see the fruits of the spirit and also the fruits of the flesh, Okay. It goes on to it says this. It says the flesh is sexual immorality. And sometimes I feel like when we talk about the works of the flesh, we stop there. Like the works of the flesh is more than sex. Okay? Sexual immorality, impurity. How many of you know impurity is just something just that which is tainted? Okay? Debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. You're like, sorcery? There's so many times, really, sorcery or, or, or idolatry, you could, you could use it with, like, uh, fleeces and, and trying to get something to happen a certain way or, like, these kind of things. We don't think of it like that today, but there's, we're, we're, we're saying, if this happens, we're, we're, like, basically wanting a spirit to work for us Instead of saying, God, what do you say? And trust in him. If it all works out, I guess that's the Lord. I guess no, no, might, there might be some things that are working out for you that are not the Lord. Man, it's just so amazing. I, I did this, and I stopped doing this, and, this, and, and completely away with what the word says. And it was like, I got this brand new truck, and I haven't been to church since, man. And I got a jet ski, and look at like It's great. He'll help you out. Now, jet skis are great. Hunting's great. Big trucks are great. If you have them, not if they have you. This is why that, that, that word, um, when, when we bring our tithes and our offerings, Lord, thank you, the provision for your vision. This is what it looks like to be submitted to the Lord. Lord, what do you say? What's the vision for, you have for my life? He goes on to say this. He said, hatred. Oh, that's a work of the flesh. Oh, I thought it was just like sexual sin. You know how, lady, you, you, may, you might think, oh, like guys deal with sex. Well, what do ladies a lot of times deal with? <laughs> Backbiting, gossip. He puts it in the same word, the same, the same place. Discord. Discord. Jealousy. Anybody get a new purse? Anybody notice? I don't know. Anybody get a haircut? Or did you get, they get their color, new, new haircut, new color? It's been like four months since I've had mine done. Well, you, know, you know what I'm saying? They got nails. It must be nice to go get nails. I mean, jealousy, it's everywhere, right? Man, I need a new bow because they just got a new bow. You haven't even killed a deer with your bow yet. All right, never mind. It's real. Listen, you can get a new driver when you hit a hole in one. All right, no, just kidding. All right. <laughs> Rage, rivalries, divisions, uh, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Verse 24, those who belong to Christ... This is what we were talking about. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This is that picture of baptism, death, burial, and resurrection. This is how you and I, we identify. We we don't just believe in our heart. We say with our mouth, I will say who who he is. And I therefore am leading my life. My life, worlds are changed by words. My world, your world. This is why it's so important what you will say. Okay? 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. And so this is what's important. Um, you and I win. Uh, you and I direct our bodies. The number one way that we start to bring submission to the, the flesh or the body is with our words. Okay? Look what it says here, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that all that, run, all that in a race... 
Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But how many of you have entered the race? How many of you have entered a race and are running for a crown? Okay, let me say it this way. That's really churchy. How many of you have been born again? How many of you have given your life to... to to, to the, okay, so the, what's happened is, in a sense, you are now uh, in a different race, and you're running for him, and you're running to obtain a prize. And he says that he that runs this race, uh, he runs, but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you you take the prize. So he's saying, y'all, we got there's certain things we should be doing because of the race that we're running. Okay, and he says everyone, verse 25, who competes in the games trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown that is perishable, but we do it for a crown that is imperishable. Therefore, do not run aimlessly. Do not fight like uh, I'm beating. I do not fight like I'm beating the air. No, I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Now, this is huge. In, in, in right now, um, I'm, I'm really bringing this highlighting back to handling our bodies a little rougher, right? It's hard. Um, it's hard to have authority. Uh, it's hard. How does? Uh, I had a way to say this earlier, but when I pet my body, when everything in my life is just to pet the flesh, it, it might be. It might actually be the one calling the shots. Like, think about that. So this is this is. It's a good thing to practice. A spiritual discipline that you'll find in Matthew chapter 6. There's three of them. When I give, when I pray, and when I fast. That's a, no, 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 I'm not talking about intermittent fasting so your body can be petted because you look good and everyone says, man, you look good. Those clothes look so good on you. Beach body, right? Why are you intermittent fasting? You're not fasting. Don't call that a fast. That's, to, that's for your flesh. So, honestly, some flesh, sometimes we're working out, and that's actually the petting of our flesh. It's your lust of being looked at in a way that is your approval. We're going to look at this here in just a second. But he says, handle your body roughly. Handle your body roughly. But why? Because there's a race. There's a race. Are people, have you, ever, have you ever been there where, like, what you once held, you no longer held? Or you, maybe, you, maybe you've been around somebody, maybe you've been around a brother or sister in Christ who once held this conviction but no longer holds that conviction. The word didn't change. The position changed. Why did the position change? Well, why? Because of lust. Drawn away by own lust. We're going to look at this here in a second. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. I love this that we have a high priest, and this high priest was tempted, just like we were. Look at this. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize in our weakness, but we have one who is tempted in every way that we are, and yet without sin. So here's the, here's the deal. God knows. God knows that here on this earth, you're going to have the opportunity uh, or, and you're going to be faced with opposition and temptation. And, and this is where you and I have the, the, the opportunity to submit ourselves to the Lord, to submit ourselves or to offer the sacrifice, offer my body as a living sacrifice daily, right? I, I, I pick up my cross and daily follow. This, this, is a, this is my opportunity right here to do that. And the Bible tells us that Jesus, he understands because he was, came as a man, and he was tempted in every way. And so we have this advocate with the Father. So when we come, we can come boldly because Jesus was here too. He was tempted in every way that we were tempted, right? Now, look at here. This is the temptation. 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, and you're going to see that every temptation is going to come under one of these three things. And so this is going to be, the, the in a sense, the, the piece that's going to help you and I recognize the enemy and what to do when I'm being drawn away by my own lust. Okay? When I'm drawn away by my own lust. You're going to see this. Uh, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. So this is number one, the lust of the flesh. Not necessarily in this order. You could bullet point them. They don't have to be numbered. Okay? But the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes 
and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but is of the world. It is what is, the, the Bible tells us, if you, it's at enmity or it's opposite of, of, of the Lord. It's, it's, it's warring against the Lord. We, we see that in James chapter 4, that the, 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 law, the, the world and God are, are at war with one another. The same, you would say, flesh and spirit are at war with one another, okay? So we see this, these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life. It's not of the Father, but of the world. And so Jesus came to the world, and he was tempted in these three ways. We're going to look there here this morning in Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11. So I want, I want us to see this, and then we're going to, we're going to take a step at maybe some application here. What, is it, what does it look like? Um, then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So he was led up to be tempted. If he, would, if, if he wouldn't have been uh, led by the Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness, he, would have, he, he, he had no sin in him. So the enemy had to take him to a place. The Lord had to say, I want to allow you to go be tempted in a way. And here's what happened. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. How many of you know that first day of fasting is terrible? <laughs> the second day is maybe worse. The third day, it's not so bad. What happens the third day? Your body goes into this mode, right? That it's like, hey, everything it's, 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 it's begins to just run. But after 40 days, your body gets to this place where it's got to eat because it's eating itself. And so there's hunger that is on a level that you and I don't, don't know. At this level of hunger, this level of hunger is greater than any sexual appetite. This level of hunger, you, you, you'll do anything. You'll eat anything. I mean, the most gro- you, at this level. All right. So Jesus is hungry. So it's not like, hey, I'm kind of hungry. But, you know, No, he hungered. Okay? And when the tempter came to him, again, the devil, he came to him, and what did he say? This is the lust of the flesh. All right? he, said, he, ca- he said, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. C- command them. But what did Jesus do? He spoke the word. But what, what word did he speak? A word contrary to that word. Isn't that right? And so here's this lust of the flesh right here. And the lust of flesh says this. Want now. Want now. Immediate gratification. Now, let's think about the flesh and the lust of the flesh. Immediate gratification. Respect. Could that be one of the lusts of the flesh? You know, when someone talks back to you. How many of you have ever shot back without even thinking? Okay. Immediate. Immediate gratification. Um, how many of you have been walking by and you saw the brownie and you're like, oh, like it's immediate, okay? Sex, immediate gratification. For young people, it might be porn, it might be masturbation, it might be one of a immediate gratification. This is the lust of the flesh. And so the enemy would come, and isn't that interesting? Jesus was hungry. But the tempter came and said, if you're the son of, you do this. And he breathed on that which, the lust of the flesh, that which would be of hunger, that which, which would have drawn him away to do something that was uh, opposite of what the Lord's direction would be. And the enemy breathed on that that he had within him. Now, some of, sometimes the lust of our flesh is anger. Right? Some of us, it's anger. Somebody's like, I can't believe they talk that way and they're just really soft. Other of us are like, bah! <laughs> right? But, but yet, then we have, we have a hand on different areas of the lust of the flesh. Or have you ever taken one of these, maybe it's not IQ tests, it's like personality profiles? And they have these things like, um, uh, what are you on the disc? Are you a d- blah, 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 blah? And everybody has a different makeup. Have you noticed that? Like, or somebody says, are you a beaver or, or a golden retriever, or a lion or an otter? You know, have you, how many of you know what I'm talking about? And like, I got a golden retriever here on the front row in Ben. I'm like lion, right? Beaver, right? Uh, where's the otter? Otter right there. Uh, Austin, okay? 
He's just party. No, not, not really. All right. But <laughs> see, you're not just, but you're not just one. You kind of have this makeup, right? It's the same way in, your, in, the, in the lust that you are drawn away by. Some of, some of it's like huge, like, I just got to have it now. I just got to have it now. Other people have a greater control over some of those things, and you'll move on to the next one. Well, we're going to look at these here. and uh, Let's finish reading here, Matthew. But he answered, he said, man shall not live on bread alone. But he answered, or he said, I will say, not live on bread alone, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Next verse. Then the devil took him up into a holy city and set, a, set him on a pinnacle of, of the temple. And he said to him, um, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, and he shall give his angels charge over you. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm not punctuating here in my reading. He said unto him, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you or concerning you. Uh, man, we need to not do King James ever again. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest they at any time. Here. <laughs> he brought him to this place where he looked over. And he, he, said, uh, he said, look at this. Boy, cast it. Well, I can't. I, I, I can't. Give me this. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. All right. Sorry, I, I should have put a, put a translation next to that. Um, he said this, uh, the devil took him to, uh, to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you do not uh, strike your foot against a stone. But Jesus replied, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the de next one. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And all this I will give you, he said, if you will fall down and worship me. Away from me, Satan, Jesus declared, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. For when, for then the, uh, said, then the devil left him and the angels came and ministered to him. All right. There's three different temptations here. It's the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of your eyes, right? And the last one, the second one would be the lust of the flesh, where he took him up, or not the lust of the flesh, but the lust of, of the eyes. When he takes Jesus and puts him at, in a sense, and he says, I'll give you all of this. So this is the lust, of, the lust of the eyes. The way I wrote it down is this. It promises something. You, you, you're, you're my eyes wander, or, or they go to something that promises us something. I'll give you the lust of the eyes. A big house. It promises fulfillment. He's going to draw you away because of what somebody else has, the lust of the eyes. And this is how most of it comes. And this is huge in this day and age because of what we see with the social deal. This is huge right now. So you see something, so now you've got to have it. Like, I was doing great. I didn't need one of those things that cuts the potatoes into this perfect waffle fry. But now, I need one, Right? Because I saw it. It's advertising. But this is the lust of the eyes. It's the lust of the eyes. And so for only four payments of nineteen ninety five, it's like, plus processing and handling, 196 And so we're, we'll, we'll buy things, we'll do things, because it promises this thing. So here's the lust of the eyes. It promises what? What is it promising? It promises something. So when they took Jesus up to the, the pinnacle uh, uh, and looked over and he saw all these kingdoms, it promised him something. It promised him power. So you, you need a promotion? Why? Because then my mother-in-law will respect me. Because then, I don't know, why do you need a promotion? Because then I'll make more money. Okay? And then what? Because the money will allow me to do what? What is it promising you? I'm telling you, this, is one, this was one for me for a long, a long time that I had to come over. And even to the point of, like, I've had conversations about, like, you know, even, even to this, this point, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this, sometimes it's like I would be not satisfied if I didn't live on God's economy, okay? And I'm pulling this out of my own conversation, okay? But if I, I wouldn't be satisfied if I didn't know that I lived on God's, God's economy. Let me tell you this. That's terrible to say that kind of thing for me, to say I, could, I couldn't be satisfied doing what I'm doing right now unless I knew that I was living on God's economy. Like what I have right now is enough. 
The lust of the eyes is a real thing that tells me if I made, if I didn't make 75 or 85, but I made 105, then I'd be happy. Then what? 110. Then what? 120. Then what? 160. Then what? Where does it stop? Where does it stop? The lust, this is for real. Where does it stop? Lust doesn't stop. It has to be resisted. When does it stop? You know, child porn? You know where child porn started? Regular porn. Bro, if you're at the place where you're looking at kids, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? No, you've been given to lust and it's drawn you down a road so far. So are you so dirty and beyond repair? No, you need to stand up and resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Stand up. No, you're just dirty. You're never, there's no hope for you. No. Stand up. Resist the devil. Because he's whispering to you. Lust is never satisfied. Money it will never be enough. The lust of the eye says, you need that four-wheeler. You need this. You need this. Now, you can have those things. There's nothing wrong with those things. But if they're the what promises you the letdown, if they're what promises you the peace, the enemy is drawing you away. See, this is what we said. Each one is, James chapter 1, drawn away by his own lust. Why would you be drawn away, Joe? Why would you be drawn away off by yourself? Take you out. Take you out. The enemy working like a lion, he wants to take the one on the outside. How does he get you? Drawing you away. So, is it right to say, I resist you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, when you're drawn away concerning maybe this promise that a boyfriend, a boyfriend would bring you happiness or a girlfriend would bring you happiness? Is it that you need a girlfriend? If you had a girlfriend right now, things would be good. I resist, I resist that thought in the name of Jesus. Wait a minute. I can't ha- you mean I can't have a girlfriend? I never said that. I said when the girlfriend thought... When the house thought, when my happiness, when my thankfulness, when I'm no longer thankful, but something else is promising me my joy and my thankfulness, that's the enemy. That's the enemy. And I resist you in the name of Jesus. You've given me everything that I need. Lord, I thank you that you've given me everything that I, that I need. I thank you that you have good plans for me. You, you want a girl? You want a guy that is, you want, girls, you want a, want a good, good looking dude that's faithful? Thank you, Lord. Here, here's one for you. Thank you, Lord, that you have good plans for me. You know the thoughts and plans you have for me. And I declare them. They're good. And I put your word in my mouth. I say of the Lord. When, 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 when a big house or more money or a, a new car, because this car isn't enough. Father, thank you that you've given me everything that I need that pertains to my life and my life in you. I rejoice in the fact that you're my provider. Not a manipulative Lord of you. You're my provider. No, no. Just thankful. Thankful. I'm not going to allow the lust of the flesh, when, when, when I'm drawn away, take authority over that. What? In the name of Jesus. Resist who? The devil. He's whispering, or he's the breath on that which burns within you. He's, he's at work a whole lot more than we give. So he's able to just go around without... It's time that we speak up. So you have the lust of the flesh. You have... The lust of the eyes. And I'm talking, and I just want to clarify this concerning financial things. I'm talking about me. All right? I'm talking about me. That's about me. It might be for you too, but that's about me. Where I've had to learn to pass the test. I've had to say, could I? Could I? Would I? How long would I continue? When will... I remember the word of the Lord that came to me one time. 
My, Marty Blackwelder, when we first stepped into pastoring and stepped out of business, and I remember him starting it off like this, and I, he said, can we uh, pray, you know, like he was wearing his favorite shirt and everything? <laughs> no. Anyway, and so uh, actually he came down, I think the stage was different, everything was different, and he, uh, he started it out like this, and I remember this with, with all such clarity, because I remember my response. How many of you know sometimes when God says something, you can, in a kind of, nah, nah, nah. Do you ever talk back to God's word? Yeah. Okay, I know I don't, I don't. Good, it's nice to know I'm not the only one. But he said, seems like you've taken a step back words in the natural things of life. And I remember, like, this is like, you know, like, there's like the, so- the sound like this. Mama, you know, like the good sound of music, you know, like God's presence is here. And I, it seems like you've taken a step backward in the natural things of life. And I'm over here going, seems like. I'm over here going, you don't got a clue. And that was a real battle that I would give voice to. Oh, interesting. When I give voice to the battle, but I don't answer the devil, all I'm doing is strengthening his case. So here's one. You got the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. This is a huge one when it comes to offense. The pride of life. Who you are. If you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Who, do, who, who are you? Who are you? And so there's times where you feel like you've been wronged and you want to be right. So it's about, it's about who's right, who's wrong. And, and maybe you have enough sense to, 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 to not to not run your mouth with all your friends. But at home, I remember this happened when we had something happen that just felt like so hurtful and so all these kind of things. We knew enough to not ever talk about it. But one of the things that took us probably six months is to figure out that we couldn't even talk about it. Husband and wife couldn't even continue to... Because see, all we're doing, it's like, we're just, keeping the, we're just keeping the tinder lit for the enemy to just take it to the next thing. So I, I can't, I, I got to, when, when, when I see it, I got to say, take authority over it instead of just talk about it. Thank you, Lord. So when I would talk about my, the financial situation, I remember talking about, I remember talking about it from the stage. Y'all, I remember talking about saying, and it's like almost like a woe is me, feel sorry for me. I can't get my kids a matchbox car. Like I, I struggle even going to the store because I, I, I don't know that we have enough money for a matchbox car. That was a real deal. But you know what kept me there longer? It wasn't, it wasn't the budget. It was the mindset. You know what it was? The mindset that was built by a one word, stronghold, another word, another word, another word, another word, another word. Don't you remember when we used to be able to, don't you remember when we used to be able to give this way? I want to be able to do that again. Uh, maybe one day. Ah. No! I resist you in the name of Jesus. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I resist you. It's time that we recognize the devil in our camp when he's blowing on our lust. Everyone has a different lust here. The pride, the the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the the pride of life, who you are. You know, this is why sports is such a big thing. Because it's who you are. This is why we we play for applause. We have to go get better. Why? Why do I have to get better? Why do I have to be the best? If it's not the call of God on my life to be and use this platform for the glory of God. Oh, yeah, I know they teach us things. But there's a whole lot of things that teach us things. You want to talk about teaching your kids character? Tell them no on Sunday. Tell them no on Wednesday. I'm sorry, you're going to have to sit out the next game because you chose God first. 
Well, we made a commitment to this sport. Do you make a commitment to the Lord and, and his house or the sport first? You want to teach your kids character? There's one. Hello. Standard. And what would happen is the world would, would the, the church wouldn't conform to the world, but the, 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 the church would stand as a light in a city on a hill. Guys, it's got to happen sometime. And this is not saying, shame on you, because you have a lust that is the pride of life. And the pastor's up here talking like this. I hit everybody today. Myself included. I'm black and blue. I'm receiving and eating with you. So what do I do? I do what Jesus did. What did he do? Lord, what do you say? Lord, what do you say when I'm hungry and I desire this now? And I, ah, what do you say? And then I go like this. What do I say? I will say. I will say. I will say about this. I will say concerning a fear that's coming. This Again, this is where even fear, fear, the, the, the pride of life. What if I fail? What if they think, what if they think I missed God? What if they think this? I take authority over that in the name of Jesus. See, fear doesn't lead my life, but it will. But it will if I don't have authority over it. Lust, sex, food, cars, money, whatever it might be, doesn't lead my life. But it will, and it'll lead me to a place of sin, and that sin will lead me up to a place of death or the cutoff of something. Sometimes it was like, oh, I'm still alive. Look, I ate of the fruit and the tree, and look it, we're still good. Um, now, the relationship, that which was bringing, it, it, it's, it, it's been cut off. So, resisting the devil, it, number one, starts with submitting to the Lord, understanding authority. Number two, recognizing how he, how he works. How he works and how he, uh, on, on the regular. Now, there, that's, a, that's the, where he's just oppressive, right? Now, there's this other times where he would love to try to take possession of a situation. And that's where you'll see, uh, you, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and I command you to bow your knee, right? You don't, you, we don't see that materializing, at least not yet so much. I believe it's coming more and more. All right. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, what do you say? Lord, what do you say? And then number the, the next part, Lord, what do I say? So I say, and this is where um, you have that spoken word. So let's go. Let's end, end with this to this morning. Um, Ephesians chapter six, verse seventeen. And taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, Ephesians six. Taking the shield of faith, or the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, wields, which is the word of God. My sword. It's the word, but I work my sword different than you work your sword. You know that Jesus quoted in, when he was tempted, he didn't quote the whole verse. Every time, he didn't quote the whole verse. He, 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 there was, do not tempt the Lord your God. That wasn't the whole verse. That was a portion of the verse. So Jesus is not legalistic in his approach of wielding the sword. Neither should you be. But instead, you and I take a rhema word, that's that word right there, the spoken word, take a word and you speak it in Hebrews 4.12, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's God's edge and my edge. Thank you, Father. So what is it that you say to the enemy? Take his word and swing the sword. Take, what does he say concerning your, your future? Braden, what are you going to do when you grow up? Because it's happening real quick. I don't know. No, I know. The Lord has ordered my steps. I'm trusting in Him with all my heart. And I'm leaning not to my understanding. But in all my ways, I'm acknowledging Him. And He's directing my path. What are you going to do? God's directing my path. God's directing my path. What are you going to say about that? God's directing my path. When a question comes, what are you going to do about that? God's, God's making a way where there seems to be no way. What are you going to do about that? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to thank Him because by His stripes... I've been healed. What are you going to say about that? Why? Because this body's been submitted. What if we started saying something to the enemy when he's blowing on our lust? I'll tell you what would happen. Our lives would be led a lot differently. Because pressure 
would not be there because he would flee. So here's what happens a lot of times when there's lust and there's, there's this lust and there's this, there's this push. There's this push. I know you got to pedal, but there's this push. There's this push. But if I tell, if I speak the word and he has to go and leave, now I'm not pushing. Now I'm, now I'm able to see a little bit clearer. Now I'm able to make a decision for, based upon what I really desire. Not based upon the lust of a flesh, because here's what he said. He said, Why, where you don't do what you want to do. Why is it that you don't do what you want to do? Because the flesh is ruling over, over the spirit. So what do we do? We take authority over Satan. We take authority and we resist him in the name of Jesus. How do I resist? I resist by first finding out what God's word says, and then I say, I say what he says. Why? Because what God says is law. What God says is law in the kingdom. And, and this is why submission and authority is so key. First of all, understanding that God is a God of order. And Satan, has all authority has been taken away from him. Jesus did that. And he gave it to you and me. So let's not give it back to him. Well, I don't know about tomorrow. I'm telling you there's decisions that are, have been eaten. Let me just tell you this too. I just had this pop up really strong in my heart. There's decisions that you've made that have been out of pressure and they're wrong and you know it. So rather than continuing to go away and say, God, I ask you to lead this and do this, just, just stop. And I'll tell you, if you'll, if you'll just say, Father, I've made a decision out of pressure. It's pushing. You know, I mean, this is for somebody you know exactly. And you've been, if you just say, Lord, I, I repent. I'm asking you to bring restoration where I've been looking to repair. I'm asking you to heal where I've... <sighs> he would just do this. <sighs> don't, don't be so prideful to say, I said. I said, so I am going to continue down this road because I said I would. I said... Let your yes be no, your no, your yes be yes, and your no be no. I understand that. But when my yes was made, when the enemy had me, hands to the chest, tapping my chest, saying, uncle, 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 uncle. When I was under that, nah. I missed it. I take authority over you. And I declare that the plans that you have for me are good, that I'm a child that knows your voice and the strangers I don't follow. Man, I'll tell you, and I'm not talking to you, that just you understand that. I want you to make sure that I'm not, this is not a manipulative thing in any way. I didn't even see, see I, would, I believe I would have seen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we just, can we just close our eyes and we just lift our hands? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we lift our hands today in a place of surrender, a place of submission to you, to your word, final authority in our life, your word. And Father, I thank you for uh, uh, just freedom, freedom to your people. A loosing where they've been bound. And just uh, that which has been withheld, I thank you for the abounding towards them. Father, we thank you for your word, your promises today. And we agree. 
and out of the words of with the words of your mouth any place the enemy has been whispering in your ear concerning the lust that you have i want you to use your words and and take authority over him and just say in the name of jesus i take authority over you right now and i command you to bow your knee to the name of jesus i am free from fear I am free from lust. I'm free from pride. I'm free from hurt. I'm free from want. My God has supplied all that I need. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So we take authority over that. You take authority over it because you, first, you find out what God says. And secondly, you simply agree with it. And you say, I say. I will say of the Lord. This is our verse, Psalms 91, verse 2. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge, my strength, my fortress, my strong tower. That's amplified Thank you, Lord. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you this morning for your word that was spoken. But Father, I just thank you even now. And and, and just, just come into agreement with me on this as we close. Father, thank you that we're not limited by the words of a man. But the Holy Spirit is the teacher. The one that brings to our remembrance what you said every word that you spoke and so we thank you for those words and father i just thank you for uh just i I just uh, a hedge of protection over those or i just i just thank you father that that those words would would be planted and that the enemy could not snatch them away and i just thank you right now for those that need to hold on to their possession the possession. I thank you for a firm grip concerning righteousness, a firm grip concerning uh, your, your, your provision, a firm grip concerning their children, a firm grip. We take a hold of that and we resist in the name of Jesus. Not only do I take authority over you, Satan, I grab and I take back what he's trying to, and tried to take from me. So I just do, I, in faith, I grab that back. I just, I just, if that's you, you feel like he's taken and snag, snatched something away from you. I just want you to, just, in a sense, take, take even use your hand and just see yourself taking that back. Father, I thank you taking back our children. Father, I thank you for taking back uh, purity and, and taking back you lost joy. We take that back because it was a gift of the Spirit to you. Joy. Take it back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Um, we're going to dismiss. and then. Um, but I, I do want to say this. Uh, if you need prayer or healing for anything, we'd love to pray with you afterwards. But I felt in my heart more than anything. If you need Um, maybe more conversation regarding some of those kind of things or even agreement. Uh, And I say that because of something that um, Jesus, when he was sent to to declare the word to captive people. And sometimes, um, even in your situation, this is not just for me as as a pastor, but even other believers, when you're in a battle... Um, the Bible says in 2 uh, Corinthians 5.20, it is as if Christ is making his appeal through us. There's something about this strengthening to be able to say, here's what's going on. And somebody able to say, this is what God says. This is what the Lord says. I can tell you, I remember countless times that happened with me. I can see seen it happen with my kids. I've seen it happen with so many people where just somebody just says, this is what God says. And it was just like, 
you know, and it's just a freeing thing. And then it gives them a word or a weapon to fight with. So if that's you and you need a weapon to fight with, uh, we'd love to help you. And I know we'll have some uh, leaders up here afterwards. Um, Other than that, God bless you. Have a great week. We will see you maybe tonight for the soup kitchen.